all about showcasing all the HRC funded projects that are engaging academics in the arts and humanities with the creative economy. Some people say it's worth about 9% of GDP, which is a heck of a lot of money. And it is a great mixture of artistic endeavour and imagination, and of course, real business and economic significance as well. We have a number of headline projects, which would include the four creative economy hubs for knowledge exchange, which look at different areas of the creative economy, from design to the so-called experience economy. We're also looking at copyright through the Create Centre based in Glasgow. And we're also doing a number of other things to study the way in which the creative economy functions, its dynamics and its potential. I'm Steve Wade, uh, I'm an artist based in Lancaster. Uh, I'm going to show you the Imitarium, which is an audiovisual uh, sculpture, which I developed as part of an AHRC funded master's research project at Lancaster University. The design of the cabinet is actually based on Pong. So what you'll see now is Rachel Cooper from Creative Exchange Lancaster appear. Um, and here she is making a presentation about Creative Exchange. And you can see there's various things going on in the space. So we have a real world coffee shop made from real items, physical items. And then we have the hologram like apparition. And we have a rear screen at the back. It's not that it's a new technology, it's far from that. These are old technologies melded with new to create interesting spaces for play, really. We have um, 22 PhD students that are working with us as part of the Creative Exchange, split between the three institutions. And they are getting very much involved in these projects, working with companies as collaborators. And we found some really exciting stuff coming out of these, which has benefited the companies they're working with, and also um, creating some really interesting topics for their thesis, and um, working on exploring what actually is the digital public space, and how it can add value for the creative economy. The creative economy is part of the economy but seems to be outperforming it so obviously there's been a huge amount of energy and innovation and growth. Some of that driven by technological innovation so the digital economy is obviously very important but actually the whole of the creative economy has remained vibrant perhaps because it's based very much on micro enterprises and small enterprises. They're a little bit better at bending and flexing so I think they've been surprisingly um, innovative and successful and lots of the companies we're working with are really growing and doing very well. One needs to do focus groups, one needs to listen to one's customer, one needs to do user studies and look at the user experience. My name is Patrick Lang, I'm showing uh, this chandelier, which is one of two, it's called, this one's called the Dancing, Dancing with Knees, and there's another one called the Flying Skirt, both um, are motion sensitive spinning chandeliers that change their shape dependent on the amount of motion around them. Creative Works London put me in, uh, in partnership with Campbell College of Arts, part of the University of Arts London, and I use their workshop facilities and studio space in order to essentially provide me the time to play and develop these items. It encourages you to participate with it. Another of our big uh, investments is the Copyright Centre, the Create Centre at the University of Glasgow, looking at digital technologies and their impacts on issues of intellectual property and copyrights in the creative economy. Um, and they'll be hosting some debates looking at that whole question and also the question of how universities can help or hinder with IP issues uh, in terms of engaging with the creative economy. So we've brought with us um, uh, Queen Anne uh, from from 1709, which was the passage of the first Copyright Act in the United Kingdom. We spoke to media professionals, people working in broadcasting and in media companies. They were telling us that increasingly, creative people need to understand copyright because uh, you know, they can't just pass issues off to the legal department anymore. It needs to be sort of at the beginning, in the inception of the project, they need to be thinking about copyright uh, in their work. So we got lots of interest from media freelancers and media professionals. What FireUp's doing is connecting um, design and fashion sector and individual companies with um, academics uh, and university level research so that they can um, keep innovating within their business. So this project has, has demonstrated a new production technology for polyester fabrics 
which is uh, laser welding and laser finishing at the same time. So it's, we've got a zero waste garment, so there's no waste in the pattern cutting. And um, this is developed by Dr. Goldsworthy and the um, company Warn Again, who are an upcycling company looking to develop more um, robust infrastructure for new processes for the whole of the fashion industry. It's a very wasteful industry. We decided on a theme with our business partners and we, we put out a call. We then uh, invite people to go into our ideas labs. They then generate a bunch of ideas and connections and contacts, which we then curate into a series of applications and an application procedure. Uh, and we um, award money. The principle in this is that of crowding diversity, of trying to get lots of different kinds of people together from the ideas lab through to funneling them into this sandbox process. We are looking at the potentials of waterways and their environment for the communities and the businesses of the neighbourhood, in this case, of a forgotten stretch of London's waterway system. So the Limehouse Cut is the first London canal in a, a challenging environment in Tower Hamlets. We are collecting information, sharing it with all stakeholders, asking them to have ideas for the future and make propositions. We had contributions from artists, from planners, from developers, and we're right now looking to progress this onto stage two, where we take forward some of the ideas of the stakeholders, and actually from the point of view of um, employment, production, of the kind of economic value, this is hugely, hugely valuable. This is a celebration of what the HRC has done. We are very proud of it. But it's also, I think, uh, a celebration of partnership and of collaboration. And um, that, I think, uh, is the animating spirit around the group of people who are here today. It's about joining all the dots. You know all the other research that's going on in the UK and you know all the other people and the opportunity to actually meet with them and say, hey, I really like what you're doing and I want to connect with you and look at how the two bits of knowledge that are both generating can actually form something bigger. It's absolutely fantastic to come to an event like this and see so much exciting activity taking place. And I think the arts have been um, not so good at standing up and saying how economically valuable they are to the country. So when you begin to see it here and you physically see people there doing exciting things, exciting things are happening, you really do understand how important it is to us. I mean, arts and humanities researchers are all about exploring what it means to be human. And so actually, if you think of it, think of it from that perspective, almost anything comes into play. Thank you for your visit. Goodbye. There you go.